Welcome to the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur. My name is Rita Perez. Hello. I've been a travel advisor for over 10 years and am navigating this winding road of entrepreneurship with you. I created this podcast because I wanted to share all the things I've learned from leaders both in and out of our industry that I really wish I would have known way back then. But alas, the important thing is I'm aware of them now and I want you to be too. Ready for this week's show? Let's jump in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another podcast episode. We have another wonderful guest with us. I have seen her on different podcasts in the travel industry before. And most recently, she captivated me with an article about how we need to revolutionize our marketing in the travel industry. Her name is Sahara Rose DeVore, and she is the founder of the Travel Coach Network, but she has lots of experience in our industry. And I am super excited for the conversation we are about to have. So welcome to the podcast, Sahara. Hi, Rita. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and chatting with you today. Yes, likewise, likewise. So give us a little bit of your background in the travel industry, because I know you as what I just said, the tra- the founder of the Travel Coach Network, but <laughs> we talked briefly, you have extensive background in the industry and how you got started. Yeah, yeah. So I have a little bit of a different background. Um, I uh, studied hospitality and tourism management. Um, It wasn't actually until my third year of university. Mm -hmm. So I was switching schools and I ended up going to Chicago and I applied for tourism hospitality program because I said, hey, travel, that sounds cool. I I never knew what what direction I wanted to go in life. It was never my my thing throughout high school and, and college. So I joined the program and I really fell in love with it. I fell in love with um, meeting the foreign exchange students and learning from my professor who had traveled quite a bit as well. And I was really inspired, but even as a broke college student uh, myself, I mm-hmm. had no idea how I was going to afford it, but I changed my money mindset. And over the next like year and a half to two years, saved enough money once I graduated and I I sat there with this degree in, in this great industry, but I was very underwhelmed with the lack of options, Mm -hmm. uh, job options. I knew that I didn't want to be a flight attendant. I didn't want to book travel. I didn't want to work for a company that paid me to travel for business. Any of that stuff that I was told was available at, in the year 2010. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot more options out there, but So I took an unconventional route and I packed a backpack. I bought a one-way ticket to Ireland and I thought I was going to go for just a month and a half out of uh, Western Europe. So I always heard of people backpacking Europe Mm -hmm. and I went and I uh, kind of just was the catalyst to catching the, the travel bug and I really didn't stop 10 years later (laughs) from then. Um, And I wound up spending the next decade hopping around the globe to over 84 countries across six continents um, solo. And Mm -hmm. that's when I really learned about the travel industry and got hands on and nitty gritty with it all and developed two businesses that sparked from my interests of the problems and, and trends and you know, voids in the industry that I saw existed. Yes. Wonderful. So what's the first business that you had or had? Yes, so I started, uh, as a travel coach, I never saw the terms before, but when I was ready to start a business, I saw that the coaching industry was booming. There was so many wellness and life coaches and business coaches and even though I never saw the terms together, I knew in my heart, in my gut, it felt right. And I said, mm-hmm. I want to be a travel coach. I didn't know what that meant. So I was working on building my business and defining it for myself. And um, so I went down the route of wellness travel coaching. And I went to clients like companies and business travel and corporate wellness um, to integrate, you know, and, and, and educate them on how powerful travel can be a travel experience could be on pers- people's well being, mm-hmm. um, and, and really help combat a lot of that burnout epidemic that was happening, happening again, uh, among both industries. 
And while I was building that, I had a lot of interest on online from other travelers asking what travel coaching was and how I learned about it and how I built my business. And because I didn't have a place that I could send them to you, I created it myself. I also created the Travel Coach Network and built what is now the world's first and only certification program for travel coaching. But I built this network where I can mentor and guide and inspire and empower other travelers to think bigger when it came to their passion for travel and their skills and their interests. Because I always believe that there really is a lot more that you can do for a travel career than just booking trips and and planning trips or writing Mm -hmm. about trips. Because I knew for myself, that's not what I wanted. And I knew there must be a whole world of other travelers out there who felt aligned with that because we all know something so different about travel. Right. And I knew that I had met so many travelers throughout my journey who had a different perspective and different set of interests and, and insight and expertise that I didn't. And so I wanted to help them figure out how they can turn all that into a business that they really aligned with. Okay. So how would you say a travel coach and a travel agent advisor. How do those roles differ? Yeah, the travel is a very common question. The travel agent and a travel advisor, there's a whole process and you know this, there's a process to getting your license and having the platform that you can have certain discounts or deals with. You usually have to go through a host agency for a certain amount of years. If you want to then start your own, it's a whole different business model and it has a big emphasis on taking control and planning and booking someone's trip Mm -hmm. as on the flip side, a travel coach helps with setting those intentions for the trip. So getting to the root, the mindset, the internal aspect of why someone wants to travel, what are they looking to get out of of this travel experience, because we all travel for very personal reasons, Mm -hmm. other than just to go on a tour or see a museum or to lie on a beach. Um, It is, there's so many healing benefits to travel mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and travel, as we all know, is every, everyone who is a passionate traveler understands the power that travel has on our mind, body, souls, personal lives, work lives, but not everyone is an avid traveler and can understand just how impactful travel can be on them. They just know they want to travel somewhere. Um, So a travel coach helps them get to that root of where is this desire coming from? What are these motivating factors for you to escape or to, you know, get away or why do you want a sense of freedom? All these words that people tend to use when they're looking to book a trip or saying why they want to travel, what does that really mean? So the mm-hmm. travel coach helps them get to that root of it and using travel as a tool in our life for you know a wide range of things to heal, to grow, to explore, to learn. Um, and that's why travel coaching is such a broad industry because everyone specializes in something so different. I love where you said that travel is like a tool to get people to accomplish whatever it is that underlying desire is, Mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people who are in the travel selling realm, forget about that aspect. So would you say that a travel seller could also be a travel coach or could Mm -hmm. adopt travel coaching to their business? Absolutely. Absolutely. The travel coach network has Travel coaching itself has really taken off, especially over the past couple of years, as we see the travel industry transform as we Mm -hmm. come out of this pandemic, because travel had, even though it was something that was taken away from us for so long, it really shined a light on the value that travel has on everyone's life in some way, shape or form, right? Everyone still craved travel. They still want a different scenery. They wanted to connect with people. They wanted to see a new place um, more than ever before, because we were in isolation and in one place, we didn't realize truly the value travel had on us. Travel continued. What's one of the the, the most thriving industries as we yep. come out of the industry is the tourism industry. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And it's, and that's why travel agents and travel advisors and travel professionals of all different backgrounds are coming out of the woodworks to figure out like, how can I really design my business and build my business and market my business in a way that truly is authentic to me and who I serve right. and help? Um, because the old school way of 
finding your niche and choosing a demographic or choosing a brand is no longer the way to sell travel. Right. We're not even tr- selling travel. We're not selling experiences. We're selling transformations, outcomes, results, desires. That's what people are actually buying when they're traveling. Um, and that's really the change that really speaks a lot to everyone across the whole, the whole industry. And why I also talk to hotels and cruise lines. I talk to a wide range of hospitality and tourism companies because it's all very similar. Right. How do we speak to and attract the, the traveler or the wellness traveler is like a huge, huge part of the industry too. Right. I love that you mentioned that too, because that, especially like correlating it with your LinkedIn article is one of the biggest pain points that I feel a lot of people that are in the travel industry have is that their biggest selling point is like, I love to book travel. So book your travel with me. And that as me, a consumer has no, there's no connection for me. Like, I don't care that you love travel. I love travel too. Yeah. yeah. Why do I want to work with you? Yeah. Yeah. That it blows my mind how the tourism and hospitality industries in the past were able to succeed so well. Mm -hmm. And remember the travel agent industry stemmed from people not being able to book online. It was before the internet. Correct. So now you really have to think outside the box and get genuine and authentic with how you are speaking to people Mm -hmm. because there's so much noise, not only online and not only in the travel industry, but in our lives that we're scrolling through and, and bombarded with. So travel coaching really is about speaking to that individual's need. And that's really how you identify who your ideal clients are in the first place, right? Your ideal audience are in the first place. It's no longer about those old school uh, demographics. It, it's about who is desiring this, this type of outcome or transformation that you are able to help them achieve in some way, right. you know, and I hear, um, um, I've had women who focus on helping women who are dealing with divorce or widows who are dealing with loss, use travel as a way to boost their confidence, feel rejuvenated, feel alive again. These mm-hmm. are the words that speak to people. That's what people want to hear. We sell, everything is sold on emotions and we purchase yes. everything as consumers, as human beings. If something makes us feel a certain way or hopes to make us feel a certain way, that's why we pull out our credit card and purchase something, right? Right. So it's not about you as the travel agent or travel professional. It's not about you. It's about what are the pain points? What are the journeys? What are the transformations that your clients are looking to achieve? Amen. Like I just keep thinking, I mean, and we had, we had gone on before that the old way of marketing was, hi, my name is Rita Perez. I've had 11 years of experience. I have three certifications, which I help in the back end support who we are as professionals, Mm -hmm. but no one wants to start off with that. Like right now, my problem is I'm searching through Google and I can't figure out what airport I'm supposed to go to, or I can't figure out like which resort is the right thing. And I have Mm -hmm. like an elephant on my chest though. That's the pain point. Like, do you have an elephant on your chest currently? Would you like me to relieve that for you? Mm -hmm. Like those are the emotional center points that the travel industry really needs to get to. Nobody cares that there's 3000 rooms at your property or that your newest ship is 5,000, whatever. That's (laughs) crazy. I heard, I hear web and I watch, I absorb a lot of what's going on in the industry. I'm also very involved with the industry. I'm a speaker for a lot of events. So I get very hands-on and into the industry. And so, especially during the pandemic and coming out of it, I, want to hear what are companies talking about? Mm-hmm. What are the, how are they selling? What are they selling? What are these new innovations? We hear all the time, the best in the industry or new improver, the most Large. personalized experience, mm-hmm. or, um, you know, I hear all these key phrases and they're like, um, a tailored experience, like never before, or, you know, a transformation of your life. And I'm like, great, great start. Okay. Let's see what, what, what is this? Mm-hmm. 
it's always the same stuff. I was watching cruise, uh, some cruise uh, presentation webinars that sold to travel agents so that they could, they're educating travel agents so that they could sell their, their experiences, their, mm-hmm. their brand. Um, and yes, they're like, this is what we're doing in the world of wellness. We have aromatherapy in your bathtubs and in, in your suite. And the suite is this square footage and there's a window and we got Pelotons on the, on <laughs> the, the bay for you. And I'm like, I don't think any, last time I talked to people who went on a trip, I guarantee they weren't like, I cannot wait to go and sit in that bathtub in the room. I cannot wait to go ride on that Peloton. Right. No, it's not what people are talking about. Right. People are talking about, you know, why they want to get away. I cannot wait to go to feel, you know, out of this mental routine that I have every day with my workload, or I am, you know, I just need some time to myself. I need to breathe in some fresh air. I need to, you know, just these are the reasons why people, Mm -hmm. people travel and like the industry has just missed the mark and they continue to miss the mark, um, moving forward. And it blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm even thinking like right now, I would love to travel because I'm feeling very overwhelmed with a lot of things that are going on in my life. And if I could just get away, hear some ocean waves and escape from all the hubbub that's happening in the online world, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But nobody is talking to those points. Because also, I think the other problem is that uh, travel and hospitality companies or professionals don't know who they're marketing to either. They're just trying to market to everyone. And when you're, that's with anything, you try to sell something to everyone, you're going to, it's going to be a lot more of a bumpy road and a lot more difficult for you. If you don't narrow down who exactly are you speaking to? And that's something companies don't want to pay attention to. Uh, when I think about it, like me, I, I mean, I spent over a decade hopping around the globe solo, but my lifestyle is different as an entrepreneur. And now I'm getting married. So I met my fiance at the beginning the very beginning of the pandemic. So we didn't get to travel anywhere outside of, you know, our States. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, when I see, think of travel now, it speaks to me in the way that I'm like, well, I want to go somewhere so we can build these memories together that we can see these, all these amazing landscapes. And I want him to see waterfalls and I Mm -hmm. want him, I want to see the smile in his face. And I want to, you know, grow our relationship and like, you know, go through travel together, you know, the ups and the downs and strengthen our bond. But mm-hmm. like companies who sell to couples don't talk about those things. They're like, mm-hmm. come sit on the beach and drink pina coladas or lay in our hot tub. Right. But like, okay, but we can do that anywhere. So really speaking to what, why people actually want to tra- travel, it has been the issue. Right. No, you say that. And I, I, there were two things that popped up for me, but the, the one that I remember because we're, you were mentioning a little bit about romance travel is Shannon Cunningham, who is big in the travel industry as a support and engagement uh, coordinator of sorts, her travel business that she used to own, her tagline was something like, don't just fall in love, stay in love. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a romance. I'm not in the romance world, but that touched me so much. And like not being in part of the romance, like Yes. Isn't that the whole point of being in a relationship that you get to fall in love with the person over and over again? And how yeah, incredible and travel it is can travel do for you. Boom. Travel strengthens and, and, you know, shows your weaknesses and, and makes you vulnerable and it, it has someone protect you. And, you know, they're all go through all these different things. And that's really, you know, the epitome of couples travel, mm-hmm. um, or re- any, any sort of relationships traveling. Um, but it just, I don't know, maybe, maybe moving forward, you know, that's, this is what I talk about a lot and teach in my travel coach network and those in my community. And that I go and I talk to companies about, and I do webinars on as well, but like, we'll see, you know, as what changes Uh, the travel industry, obviously just like most industries has been all about the dollar, but when consumer behaviors change and traveler behaviors have changed and continue to change. Um, it's 
it's inevitable that companies are going to also have to start changing. Right. They, they, you know, their, their marketing, right. Their offers, right. everything. Now, the kind of, this is a good segue because this is something that I was thinking about. I know some people may add travel coaching to their travel selling businesses. When I say travel seller, I'm thinking of like a travel supplier or a travel advisor, travel agent. Mm -hmm. But are you finding that some people are transitioning their travel business to just full on travel coaching as well? Uh, Yeah, I have seen that. Um, And I think a lot of that is because, you know, the travel agent, travel advisor industry was a, one of the only options. If you love travel, you must be a travel agent. Or mm-hmm. And I still get it. Even in the travel coaching world, because it is so new, people automatically assume they're the same as travel agents mm-hmm. because it has been a dominated industry because there really hasn't been many other options out there. Um, so people have been either... Um, seeing how they can transform their travel agent business by adding travel coaching uh, for sure. Or I've just heard them say, you know, how it, it wasn't what I expected. Travel agent world wasn't what I expected. And I, it didn't align with my values of how I wanted to utilize my passion for travel, which I mm-hmm. can totally understand by hearing them. And again, I, I never became a travel agent because I just knew in my gut, that's not what I wanted to do. Right. I have anxiety issues and I don't like planning people's trips and booking <laughs> trips. If something goes wrong, I don't want them calling me about it. Right. You know, like I have experience doing so I've traveled around the world. I've had friends come with me. I've taken my mom and her friends on trips and I planned it all. I don't like it. Um, but it's for, you know, there are people who do love it, but I've also seen, and it's crazy how, how many different industries have been incorporating travel into their work. So I've had medical professionals like doctors, physicians, therapists, uh, coming into the network to say, how can I add travel? And there's a thing called like prescribing travel, prescription travel. How can I add this to, um, working with my, my patients uh, or my clients. So there are many articles that I read during the pandemic that by CNN or no BBC, I'm sorry, uh, BBC. And they were reporting how physicians in the UK were prescribing time in nature. So in green spaces, so gardening, being in parks for people with high stress and high anxiety, which is, you know, it's, I want to say it's genius, but at the same time, I'm like, well, duh, you uh-huh. know, we <laughs> naturally as humans gravitate towards blue and green spaces, right? but to see the medical industry kind, kind of like aligning with it now, it's amazing. So I've had, um, so many different industries, of course, of course, other types of coaches too. So spiritual coaches, life coaches saying, well, of course, I've always talked about and recommended that they go on a trip during my sessions but I never thought about incorporating travel coaching with my coaching. So Mm -hmm. I have them in my program, so many different types of people, which is great because travel is such an important piece to our lives, no matter what we do or what industry we're in, you know, Mm -hmm. we have, uh, I work with executive coaching who add travel into their work and, and um, encourage and, and guide and help and empower executive women to utilize their vacations effectively. Um, I myself, like I said, focus in corporate wellness and talk about why vacation policies need to be enhanced, how to incorporate elements of travel like um, cultural differences or human interaction uh, or uh, human connection or Mm -hmm. time in nature to Mm -hmm. help enhance your um, corporate wellness, your your company culture as well. Mm All of this is tied to travel, sustainability. That's tied to travel and well-being, and that's a right. huge booming industry too. That is, so I my I, it's like a two-parter question. Do enough people know that your business even exists? If you're not meeting your yearly income goals, then probably not. You need more clients, which means you need more prospects, and you can't get those unless you're meeting them where they are. If you're doing things like sending weekly emails and posting to social media, you have put the horse ahead of the cart. So let's put the horse back where it belongs and find opportunities to increase the number of eyeballs on your business by joining the Visibility Collaborative. Search for visibility opportunities, track your efforts, and troubleshoot in community. 
Head on over to the show notes to learn more and get ready to turn your new prospects into profits. I'm from our conversation, it's sounding like travel coaching really is like a premium or luxury service. Is that correct? No, not actually. Um, travel coaching is, it should be the foundation of any travel service because in order to plan and book a trip, you ask the basic questions, right? Like, where do you want to go? What do you like to do? What kind of cuisine do you like? But taking a layer deeper is travel coaching. Yeah. Why do you want to go there? Why do you even want to go on this trip? Because when you can find those answers and you can help pull those answers from, from clients, from traveler, I don't like to call them clients. They're people, human beings from travelers. Um, and you can pull those answers, you know, I'm, you know, whatever their, their motivating factors, whatever their pain point is, like I said, maybe it's a, a, a busy mom who works and has kids and just needs time for herself. Those questions don't tend to be asked, but mm-hmm. if you can understand that's one of the motivations for why she wants to get away as people say, or escape, um, you know, what does an escape look like for you? Spending mm-hmm. time alone. Do you need, you know, self-reflection? Maybe therefore you can recommend going towards a body of water. It has a lot of healing powers. Um, you know, spending time at the beach, spending time, taking a brisk walk around the lake. Um, I know some of the best places that I are memorable for me is, these small towns with, you know, beautiful lakes where I can just sit along the mountainside and just sit with a journal. And Mm -hmm. those are just me times. So it's an added level to how people can plan and book a trip because it helps you come up with those answers better. Well, who do you need to go with or who are you going to go with? How long do you need to go for? Where are you going to go? Are you going to go to a busy city? Probably not. If you're trying to be alone and have some like exclusivity or, you know, some, um, you know, some solitude and serenity for a little bit, Mm -hmm. but, um, it can really help answer a lot of those questions that people tend to go to right away, because that was the traditional way of planning a trip. Right. 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 And I'm even thinking that I feel like any travel seller would benefit at least from learning some of the travel coaching techniques, because I feel like it could lead to higher conversion rates because you're able to delve in a little bit deeper. Yeah. And it also helps. And this is something I hear a lot in the travel agent industry is I'm chasing my clients. I can, where can I get my next client? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, if your messaging was strong enough and authentic enough and spoke directly to your ideal person, you won't have to chase them. You'll be attracting them. They'll be exactly. coming to you or their share word of mouth, or they will be interested and want to learn more about what you do or hear more about your story, because ultimately they're going to want an experience that either you've had something similar, a transformation that you've had. And that's something also that a lot of travel professionals, travel agents haven't tapped into and utilized. Where does your love of travel stem from? What transformations have you gained? Why travel versus any other industry, any other career path? Where does that come from? And utilize, that's your story. That's your brand story. Your brand story is what is used in any business to attract the ideal audience. Right. So utilize your brand story. That means, why did you start traveling? What did travel do for you? Where was your mindset before you traveled, during your travel? And what has travel helped you become? It has, it's different for all of us. And that's where people are going to say, well, I wanted to experience something like that. Or I used to feel that way. Or I used to feel that unhappy. I used to feel that stuck before, because I always say when I started traveling right after university, I was, I, like I said, I struggled with anxiety. I had bouts of depression. I didn't know at 22 years old, what I wanted in life, where I wanted to live, who I wanted to be I had a lot of family issues going on. I was highly stressed. I had anxiety attacks. I was like, I need to like figure out what happiness looks like to me. Yes. And not saying travel is an answer or cure for anything, but it sure can dang help, right? That's (laughs) why we keep going back and back and back. It's very gravitating. That's why there's a huge resignation happening in the industry, in the workplace industry. Right. Because you know what? People have more flexibility. Flexibility means travel, whether it's long-term, short distance, whatever it might be. People revaluated what 
happiness means to them, what their time is worth, what their energy is worth, what their mental health is worth. And travel has a key component in all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, you have like lit the fire within me, just uh, hearing some of the questions. I'm like, I need to go back and answer some of those questions for myself because it gets me so giddy and excited. And I feel that's kind of like, it should be like a cornerstone of being in the travel industry is that you mm-hmm. go to those moments that change your life so that you're able to more clearly articulate that to your clients and the people that are coming yeah. to you. Absolutely. But that's not taught in the industry. Right. By these, these companies, I went to a big travel agent organization, uh, associations, um, uh, event, uh, annual conference, right right the very first one after coming out of the pandemic and i was like okay i'm ready to hear some some innovative you know thoughts from some of these leaders in these big companies and i sat in on these sessions and you know as the travel coach entrepreneur that i am and you know i heard from the travel agents at the table being like oh i'm here to like be inspired i just started or i was new at before the pandemic and I, I need direction. I need to figure out, you know, what niche to go in. Okay. I was like, well, hopefully they get some, some, uh, insight and some inspiration here. And these experts sat up there and these are big companies Mm -hmm. and everything was as if it was 10 years ago. And I was like, no, you're not saying this (laughs) to these people who are just starting. This is what you're telling them. Right. I'm like, there's a huge, huge, this is a problem. Um, But again, these companies are so used to, and a lot of times the people giving this information aren't the ones who's actually selling. They're the ones at the top of the company. Right. They're just collecting commissions. Right. They, They don't. I was like, no, you need to understand the pain points of the professionals so you can figure out how they can navigate those, not just switching to another niche or adding another niche to who they do, who they serve so that they can serve a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. There's so many big events that I have gone to in the travel industry where I'm just like, this is a snooze fast. This is a bore fast. Like really, I'm only here to network because none of this information is valuable to like right. the entrepreneur that I have evolved to be. So I know for some people they're like, okay, so it sounds like travel coaching is asking a bunch of questions. Can you just state, are there like any pillars or cornerstones of what a travel coach is and how they help their clients? Yeah. So yeah, it's far more than just asking the right questions. That's a key component to it, but because coaching is in the word. Mm -hmm. In coaching, you ask questions, you help people reach their highest potential with when you work with them, just like a basketball coach. Right. Um, But within the travel coaching and and to be honest, there's because the industry has grown, I've realized there are different definitions out there, um, but I can only speak to and define what it means within the travel coach network and Mm -hmm. my world of travel coaching and what I teach. Um, and it really is, you know, honing in on your story and your, your transformation through travel, Mm -hmm. identifying who it is you truly want to serve and what are their pain points and creating a framework out of your ideas. Because within travel coaching, I never believe that you should pigeonhole your capabilities and your scalability with your knowledge of travel. Mm -hmm. And that's also what the travel agent industry has done for so long is saying, well, you can only plan and book trips. You love travel. You can only plan and book trips. Right. No, there are so many different revenue streams you can create. I mean, I'm living proof of it, of what I do. And it's, but it's up to that individual because everyone has different interests and what they like to do. You know, I'm not a writer. I don't want to write about it and get paid for it. I don't want to, you know, add planning and booking trips to my, my services. I don't want to work on what with one-on-one and it's more than just one-on-one coaching or group coaching, which mm-hmm. is another misconception about it. I don't do that. I, I go to the bigger companies and I say, I'm going to coach your travel managers. I'm going to coach your executives. I'm going to coach um, you know, whoever it is that then works with everyone else. So who then serves and helps the business travelers, then who serves and helps the employees. Um, that's how my brain and my vision for my wellness travel coaching business is. But anything is possible. So I always say to, you know, think big or think, figure out your vision of what you want to do with your love of travel, because 
you can have various revenue streams and do so many different things. If you want to go on a tour with people, add that to your business. If you want mm -hmm. to, you know, work one-on-one -on -one with individuals, add that to your business, whatever it might be. Um, and so creating a framework helps that. And I talk about that a lot in my, my program, because we could have so many different ideas as travelers uh, and travel experts. You know, I can help all these different types of people because everyone likes to travel. And again, mm -hmm. you got to narrow it down a little bit more. Right. So if you create a framework, which essentially just means what are your core messages, your core beliefs about travel? Yeah. You know, for me, for example, in my wellness travel coaching, um, I would say like travel is healing mentally, physically, emotionally. I built a framework within that and I use pillars of strength to help enhance that. Meaning did research, I studied, I had collected information and data, and now I educate. Now I say, where can I apply this to you? Corporate wellness, where, uh, employees in the workplace with vacation policies, business travelers, hotels, creating wellness experiences that are outside the box, cruise lines, creating wellness experiences. It's the same framework. I just tailor it towards the different audiences, mm -hmm. uh, but that's a scalability factor. So you can, anyone can do anything with their uh, I get paid to speak around the world. Um, I get, you know, I work with organizations. Beautiful. It's, it, I, I want my main goal in my business. And I always say, I don't care if people call themselves a travel coach or not. I mean, ideally I would love you to call yourself right. a travel coach, but I don't care. It's, I want you to understand that your knowledge and your passion for travel and what you've experienced through your travels is so valuable and so you can do so much more with it mm -hmm. if you took the time and figure that out and put in the time and energy and, and work into all of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, I, I had one thought about what travel coaching was, but you have just opened up. I'm like, there are so many different possibilities to either if I wanted to transition my travel business or add that to my travel business. One, one last quick question. Would you say that even it might be good for the people who still want to continue being travel sellers to possibly partner with travel coaches? Yep. yep. That's something else that travel coaches, uh, I speak to those in my program about is, Hey, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to plan and book partner with someone, collaborate, there mm -hmm. are, I had, um, I also, run a, um, elite female travel entrepreneurs group. So it's a, a small, very small group. It's my third year hosting this or bringing guest mentors, uh, a lot of my mentors in the industry. And okay. so I had one lady came in who's like CEO of project passport, which is a, um, corporate wellness retreat, um, company. And she said like, I don't plan and book the trip. So I collaborate with the travel experts. So, you know, collab instead of thinking like, Oh, it's either, or, so right. it's not that you have to choose. Should I be a travel agent? Should I be a travel coach? You can combine anything you want to do in your business. Um, or you also can say, well, if that's not my route. Who aligns with my brand, my vision, my messaging, and I'll partner, I'll collaborate with them. We'll we'll do something great together or build some sort of partnership or referral or something like that. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, if travel agents don't want to add travel coaching to it, then say, well, this is your first step is working with this travel coach as my partner. And then going on to like the planning and booking phase, you can structure your business any way you want. It's more of every entrepreneur has to ask yourself, what do you want to do in your business? What do you enjoy doing? What do you not enjoy doing? Right. And I can say, I don't enjoy planning and booking trips for my myself. And I also don't enjoy working one-on-one -on -one with individuals. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, that, that looks different for everyone. Right. And I think, especially that you bring that up, what do you want to be doing? I know many travel professionals have been having a very challenging summer with all the, all the bizarre things that are going on within our industry right now that I feel like some might want to be transitioning to just doing more travel coaching. So if anybody's wanting more information on the travel coach network or to kind of like build up these partnerships with travel coaches where are the places that they can go to find out some more? Yeah. So the travel coach network is the place to go. Um, if you are a company or a traveler looking to work with or hire a travel coach, um, you can also reach out to me. Um, our 
platform is growing tremendously. So we're going to be going through a really great remodel of our entire platform um, to make it more uh, accessible and easier to find the travel coaches that really suit your personal wants and needs. Um, but you can also find us on the Travel Coach Network at uh, on Instagram, on Facebook. We have a, a free um, open global community uh, if anyone wants to join that. And, or find me myself, which is I'm under Sahara Rose, the travel coach on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Perfect. Sahara, thank you so much for being here. This, sure. I have really enjoyed this conversation. Is there anything else you wanted to leave the listeners with before we jump off? Um, I, I will share with you. So I think maybe in your show notes, um, I'll put a free beginner's guide to travel coaching. So awesome. literally the steps that I took when I started my wellness travel coaching business, I put into this guide, um, and people love it. So it's a great kind of first step. If you're not, be, not sure what to start to do, or you want to learn more about it, that's a great step too. Awesome. I love that. I, I cannot wait to download that myself. Then. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much, Rita. Thank you. <laughs> Have a wonderful, wonderful week listeners. Tune in next week. Thanks for joining me on the strategic travel entrepreneur. Please subscribe and leave a show a rating on your favorite podcast platform. Oh, and don't forget to take a look at the show notes for important information and links. See you next week.